Now, we've seen this discussion about a vaccine passport. Some describe it as discrimination, but it's really business that will be at the front line of all this, having to, you know, police it in, in many ways or implement it. If you don't get that official um, kind of uh, implementation of a vaccine passport from a federal and state level, does it fall on businesses to do this anyway? Because we all know that more freedoms are coming with vaccinations, mm. even if it's, you know, at an official level or not. Look, I think that's true. More freedoms will come, and they should come uh, if, you, if you're fully vaccinated. Uh, there should be a sense in which, well, if I've done the right thing and I've got my two vaccines, uh, then I get an extra degree of freedom. But it's got to be a simple system. It's got to be one system, and it's got to be really about the person's responsibility, my responsibility, to uh, upload the material, to show the passport, um, I don't think you can ask business to go alone on this because uh, you can't have a situation. And we saw this with QR codes, didn't we? That, if, you know, if you've got, in the New South Wales case, a simple common system, it's very easy to use, people get used to it, it's very widespread in its usage. Uh, loading up a passport potentially with that, um, we just got to learn from other countries too. I mean, other countries are doing this. What I think you can't ask business to do is be the police. You can't ask small business to take the role of law enforcement. That's not their job. But, but there's no doubt we're going to need a simple digital tool to show that I've been vaccinated and that entitles me to get on a plane, uh, to potentially leave the country, to come back into the country. Mm. Um, and that is also going to, I think, be a much better incentive to get people vaccinated. Yes, I think you're right on that front. We've seen 120 new cases in Victoria today. It's a it's an alarming spike in numbers there. It's on a day that Daniel Andrews has promised to set out a, a roadmap. Um, is Victoria just behind New South Wales with the reality of living with COVID, do you think? Well, I, I think it's really encouraging what Premier Andrews has said. And, and I think, you know, that acceptance that... that that, you know, elimination is just not feasible. We've seen this in New Zealand. It's not practical, particularly with this Delta strain. So what we're asking for is to set out those, that roadmap, those milestones, try and make that mm. consistent nationally with the national roadmap so that people can see, they can order their stock, they can get things going. Um, and, and we think that's a sensible approach that he's starting to talk about. And, of course, business is very up to, to working with states to to accelerate the vaccine rollout, to promote the vaccine rollout. But that's the sort of stuff that we just have to kind of accept the reality of the circumstances we're in. And, of course, the, the data on the vaccine is overwhelming. You know, the, the, the reduction in transmission rates, the huge reductions in mortality rates, you know, that's the, that's the benefit of getting the vaccine rolling out, that we then enjoy our freedom. But more importantly, uh, we, we reduce transmission and we dramatically reduce illness and mortality. Yeah, and we've seen that. There's many countries we can point to, including exactly. Singapore, exactly. who um, generously gave us 500,000 vaccines. Jennifer yep. Westercott, thanks so much for your time. We'll speak soon, no doubt. You're very welcome. Thank you.